Hey, I'm Steve Gambiel. I'm the lead pastor at Live Church, and we're so thrilled to have this time together today. At the outset of this new year, we're believing that God would help you to believe in Him, find a sense of belonging, and to become all that God has called you to be. Come on, let's get this started. be 
done in me. You will be done in me. You will be done in me. That you will be done. Dreamers and doers. Dreamers and doers. Here's my subtitle. My subtitle will help you understand what I'm trying to bring to you today, that let's get into agreement with God's great dream for our life and do it. Get into agreement for God's great plan for your life and do it. Let me show you this in the Word, and then after this, we'll pray. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 is a well-known verse, one of my favorites. Many people love this verse. This is what it says. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's why this summer we're coming to, to agreement with God's greater plan. By bringing the best speakers that we can find in the world right here this summer. The best that we can do as a church is what we're doing. So on the 22nd of July, Danny Silk is coming, who's a great author, a great speaker from Bethel Church, uh, wrote a great, has a great message about love, loving on purpose, well known for that. Terry Christ from Hillsong Church, uh, who's a lead pastor in Phoenix, Arizona. Lucas Connell, an evangelist, but, but has a ministry to people who have depression and anxiety orders disorders and, and speak so well into that. Micah Carter from my old part of the world, Yakima, Washington is coming. Thomas Hansen's coming over from Copenhagen, by the way, now that's spreading up to Sweden and other locations. And then of course, right here, we're doing a Love Your Neighbor Day on the 28th of July. And you can sign up right after this service because there's gonna be a whole lot of people this summer that have what I call a staycation. And some people are like, well, I'm not here this summer. Or other people would say, I don't get a vacation. Steve's wife, Charlotte, is in Hawaii doing ministry. Yeah, right, uh-huh. Sure she is. You know, uh, you know, it's okay for some of us. It's like she's done, Charles done like, I think she's done uh, five different conferences in the last 14 days in different locations and preached about 12 times in different parts of the world in different time zones. But she's gonna be here this next Sunday. It's like, it's like I, I, get, I get it. I, I get it. Well, we don't have that experience, but, but let's change our attitude. Because we don't have any right being negative. For a long time in my life, I could have been very negative. You know, hey, Charles, Charles going to Hawaii, but I've got two flipping kids. <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm like a single dad for two weeks. But, but instead of being negative, I'm like, what a great opportunity for me to father my two and spend time with them and put the word of God into them and presence them and release my wife into her calling because God has plans for me. And then, and then I'm realizing as I have that attitude, you and I do not have time to be negative. We don't have time. We don't even have a moment to let that confession of depression roll off of our tongues, no? What does the Bible say? We just read it, that our mouth should be filled with laughter and our tongue should be busy writing songs. You know, it's that, that mindset shifts where we are to where we wanna go. And I'm not even talking about the fun things we're doing like the barbecues and the life group parties and the family fun days we're doing on our campuses. Why are we doing that? Because we wanna get an agreement with what God is doing in this part of the world. And just by saying, oh, you know, we're just gonna forget the summer. Nobody comes to church in summer anyway. Let's wait till September and then we'll start again. Since September, we're gonna lift the level. Who wants to be a part of that, right? I mean, who wants to, we might as well just stay in bed, go to the golf course or whatever you like to do on a Sunday. But I don't know about you, but if I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna come into the house of God, I want it to be the best Sunday every single Sunday. I want it to be, speak it to my Monday, my Tuesday, my Wednesday to build us up. So that's what we're planning. Well, let's, let's look at this because one of my favorite encounters where God takes an individual and start to turn their life from pain to gain is Jabez. Jabez lived, and his story is found in 1 Chronicles 4, verse 10. Jabez lived in a difficult time with oppression and all kinds of challenges. And in 
Chronicles 4.10 is going to come up here behind us. On The words are going to come up on the screen. Jabez, he cried out to the God of Israel and he said, Oh, that you would bless me. That was his cry. And Jabez's name meant pain. So he was named pain, experienced pain and loss and hardship. But something happened in his encounter with God and he started to dream again. And then he said, oh, that you would bless me. You can't say that unless you have a dream. Oh, bless me. And then he said, and enlarge my territory. His head was in the clouds, bless me. And he was planted, enlarge this territory. Not the territory over there, no, this territory. What a great declaration for us to make this summer. Over your neighborhood, over your job place, over every situation that you're facing. Oh God, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. That's my heart for you as your pastor. Can we lean in and let those words be declared over our house and over our lives and over our neighborhood? And when an enemy comes in to try to destroy that faith in your heart, can you rise up and say, get away from me, you little fox, because I'm saying this prayer. Lord, would you bless me and enlarge my territory? Lord, would you bless Life Church and all of our people and enlarge our territory? God, would you bless Great Britain and the nations of Europe and all of our territory? And God's like, sure. Nothing's too difficult for me. In fact, I've been waiting for you to talk to me about this. I've been waiting for me, and I know this is what God said to me. I've been waiting for you, Steve, to talk to me about some of the things that you were so wearied about. So I'm going to ask you, what are the things that are holding your dreams down? Maybe you're running up the stairs, and as you get to the top stair, you're finding yourself out of breath. And you can hardly even find the strength to carry on. Maybe you, your goal should be to, to, to discipline your lifestyle and get an agreement with how great God is and God's great plan for your life by exercising more. And you know, this last week I was exercising and I, I hurt something on my upper back. And when I hurt something, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, I could stop exercising and working out now. Or my neighbor happens to be a physio. I went and saw my physio. I feel stronger and I feel better. Why? Because I'm planning on getting stronger. I'm planning on getting better. But I have to get an agreement and do the work so I'm not out of breath because I want to be the best me that I can be. What about you? Where is it at for you? It's that planting. It's that doing it well that we're talking about. And I think that's what Jabez experienced. So he moved from where he was to where he wanted to go. You see, the Bible is full of dreamers and doers. Joseph was a dreamer and a doer. What a great dreamer he was. Had a great dream, applied it, and supplied grain for seven years in Egypt in famine. Rahab was a great dreamer in Jericho when all of Jericho was about to fall. She had a dream and she, she, she did it and she ended up in the genealogy of Jesus. Dreams are so important. And when you start to dream, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say you've lost your mind and you don't care. So let them call you crazy because we live in a, we live in a world that, that we can design. And every night when you lay in bed, let the brightest colors fill your head. Uh-huh. Let there be a million dreams that keep you awake. And I pray that you would think of the world that it could be and that you get a vision of the one I see a million dreams, it's all it's gonna take. What if we get this dreaming? And I, I say that because this is the line in the song that I like the most. However big, however small, come share your dreams with me. However big, however small, come share your dreams. God wants fellowship with his people. He wants to spend time with you this summer. I mean, think about it. The educational system began with a dream. Textbooks were designed. They were put into action. And now the nation's being educated. The car or the bus or the vehicle or the train that you arrived in for this service first started off as a blueprint and a design in someone's mind and then came into action. And now 
it got you here to this service. The petrol stations on the motorways, they were designed by people. The house you live in, the clothes you wear, have a combination of dreaming and doing about it. I'm gonna wrap up with these two things, but I wanted to bring the first one to you this. Dreamers and doers are people who decide to become the best that they can be. Let me say that again. Dreamers and doers are people who decide to become the best. Say, I wanna be the best. There is nothing wrong with saying, I want to be the best. People think, well, what does that mean? I wanna be the best for the people that love me, for this church, for this house, for this region. I wanna be the best that I can be. And that changes the way I exercise, the way I eat, what I say, what I watch, because I wanna be the best. And what I do. And the second thing is this. Dreamers and doers do not wait for perfect conditions. They start where they are and they start with what they have. They don't wait. They just get started. Church, I am so excited about the dreams and what you're going to do about your dreams this summer. I'm so excited because I think God is going to do incredible things in your life because that's the kind of God that he is. I pray you get clarity on the blueprint of your life so you can understand your great plan. And just the other day, I, I knew I needed to preach this message. And I'll just finish with this story. You know, when a preacher says, I'm gonna finish with that story, that means they got an extra 35 minutes, right? No, I'm just, I am, I'm gonna finish with this story. I was having lunch with a businessman and this just happened just two weeks. I was thinking about dreaming and doing and we were having lunch and we were talking and he said to me, he goes, Steve, you know, I sat on a Sunday in your church. And as I sat on a Sunday in your church, I was thinking about some of the things that God had given me to do. And he said, I suddenly realized that dreamers are a dime a dozen. I suddenly realized that I'd had these dreams for a long time, but I'd not done anything about them. And so I left that service today, that, that day, and I put into action the dreams that God had put in my heart. Today, that man is a multimillionaire. That man runs an energy business that's providing energy for this part of the world. And as he said that dreamers are a dime a dozen, I thought to myself, I have to preach this to the church. We don't wanna be dreamers that are a dime a dozen. We want dreamers and doers. Dreamers and doers, dreamers and doers. And together that combination would come together so that more dreams could come true in our part of the world. Time's gone, that's all we can do today. But I do wanna say, stay with us. I'm gonna loop back around on this message. I've got so much more I wanna say. So let your dreams have a deadline. Let your dreams get a deadline. Let your dreams be like this day, this day, before I go to bed at night, I'm gonna take some steps. Take one step, whatever that one step is. Come on, can you give it up for your God and get an agreement for what he wants to do in your life? He's so good. Come on, church, come up to your feet. We're gonna pray as we finish. Jesus, with every eye closed right now in this room, Jesus, we pray for your people right now. And we declare the plans you have for them are awesome plans. Plans to prosper them, not to harm them, to give them hope in the future. So God, with that mindset, let us approach your throne boldly and put a demand on heaven to Lord help us to dream with where we are and to take practical steps before this day finishes to start that college education, to finish that book project, to start that business, to reach out to that unsaved family friend. Lord, let, let that be our next step for every single one of us in this house. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
Hey, as we finish our time together, I want to ask you, have you ever invited Jesus in your life? You know, I was at a point in my life, I didn't know who Jesus was. I had to pray a prayer and say, Jesus, I believe you're real. Would you come inside my heart? Forgive me of my sins and my past mistakes. And Jesus did, and he's changed my life as a result of that. That's what the Bible teaches in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says this, it says that if you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, and if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. It's just that simple. So why do you right now in your own way and in your own words, ask Jesus in your heart. It will be the best decision that you ever make.